Um, hello, so today we are going to do uh, continuing on problems from biweekly contest 126. Um, so this week's biweekly. The second problem is mark elements on an array by performing queries. So here we have an array of numbers, positive numbers, and we have an array of queries. And the queries, each of them contains an index and, um, and a uh, valid k. Now, what do we want to do with these queries? Well, we have first we have for the array that we get as input, initially all the elements are unmarked. Okay, we consider all the elements are unmarked. And we need to apply these queries of length m on this array such that for each query what we'll do is we will take the index here and we will mark the element at that index as marked if it wasn't already marked. And then we will need to mark k other elements. Okay? Now, how do we choose which k elements to mark? Um, well, we need to pick the smallest values. And if we have multiple small values, so p likely if they are of the same value, then we need to pick the ones with the smallest indices. And if we are not able to pick the, all the k numbers, so maybe we have only two remaining unmarked and we need to pick maybe five, k equal to five, then we can just um, unmark the two that we can and then stop, right? And the goal is f to return an array of the same size as queries where each position is basically the sum of the remaining unmarked elements after performing that query, okay? Now, let's see an example just to make sure we understand this. So, for example, if we have an array like the one here, what will happen is first, the first query, we need to unmark index 1. And then we need to mark, sorry, we need to mark index 1 and mark two other elements. So, index 1 is this one, so we mark it. And then we mark two other elements. Now, the problem says you need to pick the two smallest and so this one and this one make more sense because they are the two smallest. And why you may say, why not this one? Why not this here? Well, because this one has a smaller index and this one has a smaller index. Okay, so we take the sum of the remaining and mark it. So that's 2 plus 2, that's 4, plus 3 plus 1, that's 8. And so we put 8 for the first query. Then we go to the next one. We need to mark index 3 and three other elements. So index 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, it's already marked, so we, don't, we do nothing. And then we need to mark the two smallest. Well, this one is the smallest one, so we mark it. And then the two other smallest one are these two. So the only remaining one is this one, 3. So put 3 here. And now the last one, we need to mark index 4 and two other elements. So index 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This one is index 4, it's already marked. And then we mark one more element, um, and we can't mark anything else because everything is already marked and so it returns zero That's the sum because nothing is remaining. So that's the idea here um, Now, how do we apply it? if you take a look the number the length of the array at the constraint here can be Quite big and same thing for the queries. It can be quite big. So what this tells you is We can't do an O of n squared solution we can't do an of n by m solution, so we can't loop over the queries and then loop, loop over the array. We can't do that. So we'd have to do um, something more clever here. Um, so how do, we, how do we think about that? So one way to do this, well, first, we know um, for the criteria of how to choose um, which k element to unmark, we know the criteria is to pick smallest value first, then pick smallest index, right? That's the, what the problem says. Well, when you have something like this, you have a set of element at the beginning and you need to keep picking the smallest, indis, uh, the smallest ones, the smallest values. And if the values are the same, you need to pick the smallest indices. If we take just this first part, only pick the smallest value each time, the smallest remaining value each time, we should immediately think about using a priority queue. Okay? Or a min heap, right? 
Now, for this pick, the smallest index, well, MinHip can work with a pair, right? It can compare in a pair. So if we have the value and then the index in our heap, then what that means basically is we can... That basically means if the values are the same, it will compare against the index. And since it's a MinHip, it will pick the smallest index, right? And so that's our first thing. Now, our second thing is that what we need to do for each query is return the sum of all the remaining unmarked elements. So we need some way to know which element are still marked, which element are already marked or which element are unmarked. We can do either one. We can either have keep track of the marked element or keep track of the unmarked element. Okay, I'll, I'll keep track of the marked element and since it's just a list of unique indices, we can just use a set here, okay? Um, okay, so we need these two data structures, but how can we apply them? How can we, um, how can we do this? Well, the easiest thing here is we can just go through the queries and for each query, just do what we are asked. Um, and since we will do just queries, right? So we'll just do for each queries index. We just need to make sure, remember, we need to make sure that um, we don't do an M by M solution because that won't pass. And so let's just figure out if our solution would be up, would be less than N by M. So here we'll have the index, we'd have K. And then we'll just add um, our market um, index here. I'll write something very sketch just to give us an idea of the solution. But then we'll, we will need to do for all the K elements while we have a marked value. So let's, let's say that our priority queue here, let's call it unmarked heap, right? Unmarked heap, right? So while there are unmarked values remaining in the heap, we'll pop the smallest element because that's literally what we are asked to do here. And so here, pop from then add to marked set okay and when do we stop well we should stop when we mark everything there is no need to keep going so if length of market is equal to the number of elements which is n then at this point we should break and of course we will need to set the the answer so answer at position uh, let's call it index of qi we'll need to set it to something um, which needs to be just the sum of the, n the ones that are not in marked, right? So basically this is sum of non-marked values, which we can get by just picking every index that is not in marked here. Okay? Um, and then we can just return at the end of this. Now, if you take a look, well, this is going to be a K, so this is QK, but our problem is going to be if this will pass or not. I have this sum here. So what we can do, the sum of the non-market values, whether it will pass or not, well, what we can do here is just initially pick the sum of all the elements, and each time we mark an element, we subtract by one. Right? So maybe have like sum equal to zero, right so initial sum and every time we mark something we need to subtract it because we can't do this o of n it may pass but with a bigger input we'll likely get time limit exceeded and here we set to that value because this m and here every time we pop and add to market also we subtract okay and we subtract num at pop popped index right and that should be it, right? And then at the end, we just return an answer. And you can see now we only have O of Q here. So this one is O of M, the length of queries. And this here is at most K, because we'll subtract K here. We'll do it under some condition, but we will subtract by one here. And so this is O of M by K. And let's say, see, k is at most n minus 1. But k is sort of limited by the number of elements. This is like the upper bound because if we reach it, we break. 
So overall, this k, w this here, overall, it's bounded by the length of the array. So this is this won't be O of m by n. It would be m, and then overall over all the runs, it would be n. So this should pass. Um, but let's code it up and make sure that it that it actually does. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just take this here and make it more, uh, just fix it. Um, so first we know that we need some answer array that we, is just, just initially we can pick it at um, zero for every query, right? And we need to define our data structures here. So first we need our market set. Um, which initially is equal to z just a set, and we need the unmarked va uh, our unmarked heap Q, which we said it's going to first have all the values um, and the indices. So we said V I um, for we will enumerate the nums array, right? Uh, like this, and then we need to make it an actual min heap by heapifying the our data structure here, okay? And then initially we would have a sum of everything. Remember, this is what we'll subtract each time we mark an element. Um, but we we should subtract it only if it's an element that we haven't marked before. And remember, like in the first example, there was one of the elements in the query index that was marked. So we don't want to subtract again if we already marked it. So we need to check if index is not in marked, only in that case that we want to sub subtract. And also we want to add only in that case, okay? And now we pop, we need to convert this into code. So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to unmark our, so we need to pop the smallest element. So how do we do that? Well, we just use a heap Q pop, and this will give us an index, the index and the value. That's what we added to our heap Q here. And we need to, once we do that, we need to add it to marked, right? So we need to, the same thing we did here, we need to add it to marked. But we also need to subtract it if it was not already marked. This is important. So we do the same thing. If i is not marked, then we mark it and we subtract from our sum. This will need to be subtracting index i. And only if it was not marked that we actually subtract k because let's say there were two other elements that were not marked that we could subtract it doesn't make sense to sub subtract for something that was already marked right um, and so that's what we will do in this case and then from there here we just assign the sum because we know these are the remaining unmarked element because every time we mark we subtract okay and if we reach if we mark every element, we should stop. There is no need to continue because future queries will not mark anything else. They would just all have the value of zero, which we already initialized our answer array to zero. Okay, and that should be it. This should pass. Let's run it and see if we have any syntax issues. Looks like we have one here, so this is um just initialization for our um yeah this needs to be for the length of the queries right so like this um and this should be because we need to say the to f get the index of the queries so i'll just enumerate it like this um okay and then from there we can run this code uh, and we need to also define the length of our array, so let's just do it here. And this looks good, let's submit. And does get accepted, okay? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Pretty straightforward. Um, um, the main idea is to find a way to uh, to not have an O of n by m um, too expensive of a solution. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one. Bye.